Okay, welcome to WICAP 2020. Uh, we are virtual this year, and this is the Whippy Public Library's Comic Arts Festival. This is our fourth festival uh, in a row, and I'm very excited to be here today with all of our guests. Um, and our wonderful moderator is Ashlyn. She is our community engagement assistant, um, and she has worked at the library for three years now, um, helping to create community events um, and programs. So I'm really excited to have her here today. Um, and before I pass it over to her, I would just like to acknowledge that at the Whippy Public Library, we are situated on the treaty and traditional territory of the Mississaugas of Scugog Islands First Nation. So may we respectfully honor the knowledge and understanding of the indigenous stewards of these ancestral lands and ensure that the voices of the First Peoples are represented in our collections, programs, and services. All right, so go ahead, Ashlyn. All right, cool. Well, first, thank you so much, everyone, for joining, all of our artists who are hanging out with us today, and thanks to everyone who's tuning in right now. Um, yeah, we're super excited. As Mallory said, it's our fourth year of WITCAF, which is awesome. So to everyone who has come before, welcome back. And to all the newcomers, welcome. We're so happy to have you here. Um, okay, so first I'm just gonna introduce everyone. So um, I'm just gonna read everyone's bios. If anyone else is interested who's watching and they wanna see more, you can go to whitbylibrary.ca slash WITCAF. Okay, so our first group, we're so excited to have them, is Carpus Collective. So they're an art collective initiative started in 2017 by Cheryl's, Julia, and Joyce. They share a love of creating art and stories and showcase paintings, sculptures, illustrations, zines, and merchandise. They are proud of their diverse and unique members who come from varying backgrounds, beliefs, and worldviews. They aim to create a healthy space for open conversation with their work amongst their respective communities and celebrate the narrative of these differences working together. And we're so excited to have you all here today. Um, also introduce Jason Lapidus, who is the artist of the Schuster nominated Group of Seven comic book series. So before making comics, Jason taught art at the Royal Ontario Museum <laughs> uh, and served as a communication professor at George Brown College. Uh, so we also have Jerome Cabanatan joining us today. Um, so Jerome is a full-time husband and daddy who happens to teach Taekwondo and make comics. His all-ages graphic novel, the Amazon best-selling Tree Kids of Troop 44, <laughs> has been followed up by companion children's book, ABCs of Haya. <laughs> He's used quarantine life uh, to dive deeper into comics creation and has developed friendships and skills with other great creators from Canada and around the world working on a grand design project. He's currently working on a number of books, but his focus is on the wordless graphic novel, <laughs> Sword and Scooter. <laughs> so thanks for joining. Um, all right, and we also have Eli Schwab joining us today all the way from the US. Um, so Eli is an independent comic artist, writer and publisher from Maryland, living in Los Angeles. His comic line productions has been published in comics for almost 20 years. Uh, harnessing the creative visions of others has recently become his focus. Uh, working together with people to create amazing collaborative comics that no one has ever seen before. Eli was also at the forefront of podcasting, super cool, starting his Cosmic Lion radio almost 10 years ago and contributing recently with Can I Thwip It, a comics and hip hop podcast <laughs> and The Devil in Detail, a Grendel Re podcast. Cosmic Lion Productions is available to exalt your favorite things. Cool, so everyone... We are just so excited to have you here. Everyone brings so much amazing experience and art to this panel. And I'm just so excited to have everyone here. So thank you so much. So I have a couple of questions for um, like our collectives and individuals. So I thought I could ask you some of those. And then towards the end, we can kind of talk about the teamwork and collaboration process. Okay. So first I have a question for Joyce, Charles and Julia. So your name has a really, really cool origin story. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, when we were 
discussing what we wanted to name ourselves, we wanted it to symbolize basically what we are, uh, as you read in our bio. And we found out that the, there is a cactus that blooms in three different colors. And uh, it goes by the name, was it Ario Carpus? Ar yeah. Yes. And the latter half of that, we liked the sound of it because it reminded us of the root of the word um, carpal for the bones in the hands and OS, os, meaning um, bones. And so us being able to live off of and get life from the one thing that unites us, which is making work with our hands, we thought that was a perfect example. So that's why we're Carpus Collective. Yeah, that's amazing. That's such a pretty name and that's such a beautiful story. So Thank thanks you. for sharing. Cool. Um, okay, Jason, I've got a question oh, for you. Sure, I get my name from my parent. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Yes. I mean, <laughs> okay, so what I was wondering is what it was that brought you into the comics world and what you're doing before you got into comics. Um, my, my friend and uh, collaborator, Chris Sanigan, he, he pitched me an idea to make a comic book. And I had never made a comic book. I had, you know, I had drawn as a kid a lot and wanted to make comic books as a kid, but kind of got off that track uh, once high school hit. And uh, Chris threw an idea out at me and I just thought it was such a good idea that, that I couldn't say no. And even though I didn't have the skill set or the resources or the time to make a comic book, somehow uh, I found those three things and we got it done. And then we made another and then another and then eventually we have, you know, the, the whole graphic novels finished, a six parter. And um, it's changed my life 180 degrees and made everything in my life better. Um, and sort of getting to finally be the person I wanted to be when I was 12, right, is, is a lot of fun. And uh, before that, I was, I got sidetracked into education. So I was working at the Royal Ontario Museum as a high school student um, and found that the teaching side of being at the ROM, working with kids was, was like such, such a pleasure. And the teaching side of being at the ROM was, was, um, it was more money than the thing, than like helping teaching. Teaching was, was paid more. I'm like, I want to do the thing that pays more. And I get to talk more. Okay, I want to do the thing that gets me to talk more. And eventually that led to me, you know, going to teacher's college. And, and then I got to become an art teacher and a university, sorry, a college prof, not a university prof. And um, <laughs> yeah, that, that it sort of was like a professional distraction that took me away from the, the creative side of things it was just the teaching side. But I'm much better suited for I think the creative side. I love teachers though, and I, I love teaching. I just I don't like school. Is that okay? Are we allowed to say that? <laughs> I like learning from libraries and museums and the internet here. and not school. <laughs> don't tell my children. <laughs> <laughs> Your secret's safe with us. Good. Yep. You're good. Thank you, Ashley. Oh, and so hundreds cool. of watchers. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's super, super cool to hear. That's a really interesting combination. I mean, education and art, that's, you know, they really go hand in hand. So that's so cool. So too. And yeah. it was it was fun because the thing I was I was teaching at George Brown was communication, not the tech side or the PR side, but like the relationship building teamwork side of communicating. So how you communicate that improves the way a team functions. And really, when you talk to a lot of experienced cartoonists, they keep saying that cartooning is all about communicating an idea to a reader. Like that's, so if it's not, if, it, if what you're putting onto paper or whatever form you're using, if it doesn't make the communication clearer, if it doesn't make your message clearer to the reader, then it's not good comics, it's not good communicating. So I found like all the things that uh, I've been practicing or studying or practicing so that I could teach have been kind of, merge together and uh, I get to apply all of it, especially on this Zoom chat. Totally. Yeah, that's, that's oh, sorry. I was just to say that's, that's interesting because like that's um, like I was in illustration um, and basically like the exact same thing. It's like you're using images to communicate a message. Um, and if all the elements in your design aren't helping you to communicate that message, then why is it there? What's the point? Why are you having that? Just aesthetics? Not a good enough reason. Um, so I don't know. I think like we kind of like pull that in when we're doing our work. Um, it's like use every single part of our 
like whether it's like ceramics or, you know, paper mache or whatever, like everything that we're doing is like trying to communicate a certain emotion, a certain feeling, a certain message, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, a certain aesthetic that like promotes a certain value that we hold. Mm -hmm. Um, So right on point with the (laughs) communicating part, like that's like super important. Like you said, Julie, but every part of what you're doing communicates something. I, I always like to remind myself that every everything you do in your in your art form communicates something, whether you intend it to or not. Mm-hmm. So even like your choice in font does more than just communicate the the literal meaning of the text. Mm-hmm. The choice, the very choice of font, communicates something about what you're trying to say, and the choice of panel borders in a comic communicate something about what you're trying to say and if uh, I think a large part of like that learning process is figuring out oh okay when I use this versus this it does send a different message and do I understand the message it sends to make that choice Mm -hmm. and I think that's been a huge part of um, what's gone in my way about making making more pages is is that fear of I I know I have to make these panel borders but when I make them thick or thin what different I don't know what message that's sending. I, I'm not aware of what it's like the connotation of that. So I'm afraid to put anything down because I don't know what I'm saying by doing this this choice. And so it's like you have to make your thousand pages to kind of realize what the consequences of your your messaging is. And it just you just need the reps. And I'm I'm figuring it all out bit by bit. It's painful, but having friends on Zoom that you know we we get to meet and uh, ask those questions too. It's it's incredibly helpful to. Uh, to bounce those thoughts off people. But yeah, everything does communicate something for sure. Oh, that's so interesting. Like, yeah, it's all choices that you're making, even if it doesn't feel like a choice at the time, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really neat. Yeah, well, thanks for telling us about that. Um, My pleasure. Yeah, I have a question for Jerome now. So you have talked about using comics um, as a means of Taekwondo instruction. So I'm wondering what advice you would give to people who want to make comics that express their own unique interests or hobbies or sports. Well, uh, when I started making when I started making comics, it was right. It was based. <clears throat> it was basically because the people, uh, the more people that I talked to, they say, write what you write what you know, and it's like I knew, they like, I just knew like like just potty humor like 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 just fart jokes and people falling down and it's funny and I, and I knew taekwondo so it, uh, what I would do to uh, when I'm instructing when I'm instructing a certain drill and I, I've done it like Monday through Friday and I j- just do the same drill and I say it all the time sometimes say the same jokes all the time why don't I write it down and everything that you do on a regular basis when you have to try to explain this is what I do or this is what you should do uh just just draw it out right just just draw it out and it wasn't really and it doesn't really have to be like perfect but it just like uh like what jason's saying it has to communicate right hand like whether you know like i don't know for me drawing hands is a pain like drawing hands and knuckles and and then like and all this kind of stuff like i draw elsa's in fists because i don't want to draw this right (laughs) Uh, and but uh, i'm learning but uh what it is is you just have to actually just you just have to do it and you, you got to get it done and uh, uh growing up growing up reading uh the, like reading comic books and seeing like all the different all the different art styles and all like the exceptional level of art and it, it was kind of it wasn't as inspiring as some people would think it would be it's it was actually a little bit the it would like it'll beat you down a little bit because you're like i could never draw like that right i could never draw like that so maybe i'm just gonna be a reader and just do it for myself uh but you know, however way that you put it down, someone someone's gonna like it. So, I actually found a lot of inspiration in in things like Captain Underpants, where it was, it was like, oh, the hands look different each time, right? That's fine. I still like it. It's still funny to me, right? Uh, so that's what I did. Like, actually, my the my first book was I actually did this on on Illustrator on Illustrator with on the trackpad on the trackpad of my computer so so right. it's 200 240 pages and i and i and i wrote it and i and i did it with my middle finger right so just like <laughs> let me just and, say and when it was done i'd rather die <laughs> oh my god yeah but that's, that's, that's 
that's the thing. I, <laughs> I make etch sketches too. Yeah. I make etch sketches too. And I'm yeah. good at etch sketches too. I'm Chingley, actually, you got to see this. You got to, if you think the trackpad is, where do you see this stuff? Yeah. So it's a, uh, so, so yeah, so it's, you just got to get it done. And, and uh, when they say, when you say you communicate something like where, where like what Jason was saying, or you're saying you communicate with, uh, with, with everything is, everything is a choice. Everything communicates something. Uh, my, what I'm communicating with drawing with the middle finger is uh, not, not, not like that, but like uh, when I was drawing with the trackpad, it's, it's, you can get it done, right? You can, you can get it done if it's simple. And it's like, uh, I found because it's, it's illustrator and I don't want to draw that same line over and over. Yes. Yes. There it is. Uh, oh, wow. There was a, right. There was a lot of copy paste, right? I had, I, there was a lot of copy paste, but because there was copy paste, I had to tell this and I didn't think the illustration uh, would look as good I had to play around with a little bit more stuff with the panels and the positioning and the storytelling and compositions and rather than like what the images look like themselves because I couldn't I can't like I couldn't and I still can't render stuff like this right like, I, I, so I just kind of leaned into what I knew that I could do and you got to do like that's that's where you have to that's where you have to put uh, like put all the confidence in is the things that you know how to do right that uh, you put that in the front and like they say they put your best foot forward you put your best foot forward but then you're 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 off your the things that you're bad at then you just work on those in in the back and then it'll start it'll start coming out uh you know this you just gotta get it done like with jason saying it's a thousand pages worth right yeah. get, get through a thousand pages and that that's where i'm at i i want to just I'm at a race for a thousand pages and I'm not going to judge myself as an artist or as a cartoonist until I have a thousand pages. Um, whether it's a thousand page, like I'll celebrate every thousand pages, thousand pages in a sketchbook. Yeah. Thousand pages go. Yay. I get to celebrate and thousand pages published. Yay. Thousand pages in, in this, in this one particular story, this one particular uh, brand then yay. Right. Uh, so those are, uh, you know, thousand pages as a group, right. A thousand yeah. pages as a group. Like if if I'm on a team, if I'm on a team, and as a team we've made this book, I'm gonna I'm gonna take credit for some of those pages because they talked to me about it, they talked to me about it, and those that page wouldn't be the same if I didn't have a conversation with this guy, or I didn't have a conversation with this girl. So, um, uh, yeah, I forgot where I was going with this. You, but, uh, you know what's you know what's interesting about that is like, you know, you're saying like oh, you know, like, I didn't know how to draw this thing, but I did it anyway. Um, and I feel yep. like what happens a lot is when, like, I show people, like, my work, you know, or, like, our work or whatever, they're like, oh, I could never do that. You're so talented. It's like a gift from God. I'm like, <laughs> no, no, it's not a gift, okay? I worked yeah. years on this, you know, and anybody can do it. Like, art is accessible like that's what we're trying to explain to people like anybody can do art anybody can understand art anybody can make art you just have to like literally just put the work in like yep. you know and even if like you're not like classically trained you know you didn't go to university for this or whatever like that doesn't really matter like it doesn't yep. matter as much as it does like if you're like a doctor or something then okay go to school <laughs> But like, you know, if you're like learning to make art, then like you should like just jump into it, go full force and you'll learn along the way. Like you'll learn from your peers. You're going to learn from the stuff that you see on the internet. You're going to learn from the masters that you're like, mm -hmm. like obsessed with, yeah. you know, um, and eventually you're just going to get better and then you're going to get to my level. Do you know what I'm saying? Like people are like, Oh, yeah. never yeah. do that. I can't even draw a straight line. I'm like, okay, well just start drawing straight lines and then yeah. you'll be able to do what I do. You know, like just keep use going. A ruler. Right? Yeah. A ruler. Yeah. Yeah. We use rulers. <laughs> we can't draw straight lines either. Pull, 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 pull. You, you hold it down, you hold it down and then it goes. Yes. Like, <sighs> like uh, yeah. yeah. So what that's very similar as, as a Taekwondo instructor, when, when you don't know, like a, when you don't know a move, like the, the, the thing is I teaching kids is usually a lot easier than teaching, than teaching their parents when they want to go oh. at they go at the same time. Yeah. When there's a kid, when there's a six year old kid and he, and he or she wants to know a move, they're going to do it. They're going to fall down. They're going to get it wrong. They don't care. And they're just going to do it again. They're going to do it again. By the time like the teens hit and it's a little bit and, or, or maybe they're adults, they have this 
thought in their head where they think they're supposed to know stuff and supposed to be good at stuff already because I'm an adult. So instead of them just copying it and just trying to do it, they freeze and they, they look up like, oh, I can't do that. It's like, you didn't even take a step, right? You have to be willing to take, to take that step. And, and uh, as, a, you know, as an athlete, I, like, I didn't really get better until I lost a few times or then until you, until you get, until you get smacked up a couple of times, you get smacked up a couple of times. Okay. I'm going to learn something. Right. Uh, and so that's how, that's how it goes. Yes. Jason. When I, when I was teaching art for elementary school, I was teaching kindergarten to grade eight every week. And I would ask the kids at the beginning of, of the, the year, I'd say, you know, how many of you are artists? And in kindergarten, every kid puts their hand up. Right. And then by about grade three, you get about maybe a third of the kids put their hand up. By grade seven, there's like two kids in the class who put their hand up who think of themselves as artists. And it's that idea that they they very quickly learn that there's someone in the class who's better at the at, at just the, the raw skill part at the beginning. So they stop putting in the hours, right? They stop putting in the reps. They don't practice anymore. But if you got a compliment for your work when you're six years old, that's the thing that you're going to put in more hours while you're watching TV, you're going to work in your coloring book and you just get better at manipulating the crayons and the, and the colored pencils and whatnot. And, and we want to eventually like, you're better at it than the kids in your class, not because you have some God given talent, um, but because you put in the hours, you simply put in the work and, and then adults don't want to make that, take that risk anymore. Yeah. Like you're saying is your own, but you know, I commend all of the, all of the, the folks in our, our zoom chat that I've met over the, over the last couple of years who start as adults and are willing to try and learn new things. And, and you can see where they start to freeze and when they're no longer mm -hmm. comfortable taking chances and you can see when they dive yeah. head first. And from like a little bit of distance, you can, you can see the, the way the brain works with, with taking on new experiences and, and, yeah. and what terrifies us, but it is awesome to see. And that like, just like what you're saying about going to that open heartedness and open mindedness to take on something you're not good at and to push through. Right. It's awesome yeah, to see when it works. Are people are terrified like as adults mm -hmm. of like being bad at something yeah. like mm -hmm. they don't want to make mistakes. They like, they're not, they don't want to be bad at it, you know? Yep. And it's really kind of frustrating. Cause like, I remember like, you know, like telling my mom, like, Oh mom, you should like, you know, like get a hobby. You should go like, you're so creative. You should go go to a plate painting class. And you know, she would go to this painting class. She'd come home and be like, it's ugly. It's so gross. Like I hate it. And I'm like, you literally just started. It's like your first day of like painting in like, like 30 years. And you expect to be like, what Picasso? Like, are you kidding? Like, no, it's not going to be amazing, but like, Hey, you're doing it. You're going to learn. Like, you know, it's not, amazing but that's that's okay that it's not amazing you know like you're yeah. gonna get better right and <clears throat> i remember she just like gave up after like you know a couple yeah. of weeks you know and i was like no she's like oh but she, you make it look so easy i'm like yeah because i do it every day <laughs> 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 you know like <laughs> and that sort of like ease only comes from practice so i mean that's kind of why i like love hearing stories about people who like follow their passions later on in life where they're like you know i was like a you know a professor for whatever how many years and i realized i hated it and i went to become a singer you know and i'm like hell yeah hell yeah because you know what life's too short to be doing things that you hate you know like it's okay if you're like 60 and you're starting from scratch you know like that's fine like and art is like the best place to go into it because yeah. no one's gonna be like you know you're not good enough. Ooh, sorry, I can't, you know, like there's going to be someone out there who's going to like it. Someone, you know, you're going to find everyone's your people. got their own voice to voice and to speak up with. So only yeah. you can make your own creation. So yeah, that's motivation enough to yeah. get heard. It's like a, uh, teaching the kids. Uh, I like when they're learning something new. Oh, and you see the kids clearly frustrated and they, I always just ask like, who knows how to use a spoon? And they all <laughs> raise their hand. Like who knows how to use the bathroom? And they all raise their hand. Like there was that one time when you were a kid, you can ask your parents that you didn't know how to use a spoon. They tried to put it and you made a mess. And then you tried to 
put you into the bathroom and guess what happened? You were scared and you made a mess and you had these accidents and, but you're all good now. So let's go make a mess, right? You know, you're trying to learn a new move, go make a mess. It's, we'll laugh about it later. And you know, that, that kind of will get the kids like, like my daughter, she's very, like, she's, she doesn't like making mistakes either. Cause right? she's, she's just self-conscious and, and that's fine. But it's, you, you try to, you try to break that down. You try to, you, you try to get rid of it. Cause, um, uh, if they're stuck to, if you're stuck too much in your shell, then you're not going to grow. Right. You, you, it, it has to crack open. It has to go, uh, you know, butterfly goes like when a butterfly goes into the, the cocoon or whatever the word is, right. Um, the chrysalis, like it's not a caterpillar in there. It's not a butterfly either. It's just, it's liquefied. It's melted. It's, it goes to nothing. So, um, if you're willing to to take that transformation and just and just I don't know how to do it and just take the beating, you'll you'll come out all right. You'll come out all right, right? Maybe not exactly what you thought, but it it'll be, be it'll be better and it'll be more you, right? Because yeah, you'll find your own it. your own path, your own way Correct. of doing exactly. things, and often that's right. like way more interesting than if you were to just like yeah. copy what everyone else is doing. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny so. because you say when you're talking about uh, uh, following your someone like like going through life and following passions, I've be, always been encouraged to follow my passion. Like it's not like Taekwondo was like this this job that I didn't want to do. Actually, I had I was very self conscious about that because it wasn't a normal job that other people had. Like I didn't go into an office or anything like that. I was self conscious a lot, but uh, but you know, you, you work it, you work it the right way and you treat, you treat it as an art and you advocate for yourself and you do it with confidence and you know that you're, uh, that it's important for you and it's important for the people that are around you. And, uh, you know, I've always pushed for that. So when, when COVID hit and that kind of put the brakes on, a on a lot of like physical, uh, on a, a lot of physical things, uh, we, we turned to art, right? We, I, I turned to art because that was the other passion as I, when I would teach, I was very, I was very animated and I had, and I had energy. It was almost like a cartoon. Uh, when I used to, when I used to compete, when I used to compete, I, I read a lot of Spider-Man and Ninja Turtles. So I was, I had a little, I had a little bit of cockiness to me, right? Because it was fun and it, and it got recognized. And whether I won or I lost or, or whatnot, uh, people remembered the, the feeling that I gave them, like if, if, whether I'm watching or I'm competing against them, or if they're on the same team as me, uh, that that feeling is like that's what people remember. They don't remember the score. They don't remember if I won or I lost, right? They 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 just remember, oh yeah, was, that that was funny. You, you you tried hard. I that was fun, right? Or you know, I remember I remember you ran this one training camp, and I don't remember the move that you said, but. I had a good time, <laughs> right? That, and and that to me is is what's most important. I think I think people can look past the way that the way that I draw that my the pinky looks the same as the thumb, which is completely wrong. I think it'll go past it because they'll read into what I'm trying to communicate rather than just what I just drew. Yeah. Uh, wow, I don't know if that makes sense to anybody? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's really cool and. Yeah, just like I feel like all of your like takes on art and like getting into art are just like really positive and honestly like really inspiring. And it's just so nice to hear this, especially, you know, like, yeah, like getting into things later on in the game. That's that's awesome. Um, yeah, I want to ask Eli a question now. Um, OK, so you are our one American guest. So I was wondering if you could tell us about the comic scene in LA and maybe some of the differences you found from like working with American artists to working with Canadian artists. Sure. Um, the comic scene in LA is super cool. And like when I first moved here, man, I'll tell you, there's this place called Meltdown Comics, which is one of the most amazing comic book stores. I mean, it's so much more than that. They had a show on Comedy Central called like the Meltdown with Kumail Nanjiani, you might've seen. But um, the, the, the greatest thing for me ever was like, I first moved here and I learned about this. Uh, it was like a comics jam every week, uh, sorry, every month called uh, Meltology. And uh, so every month, all these artists would just come hang out at Meltdown Comics, draw a page, and then that would go into a zine. And you'd pay five bucks and they'd print it up. And then next month you'd go, you'd get that zine from last week and it was an amazing way to like meet all these people and hang out with stuff and also like in the back of the comic book shop they had a comedy venue 
And so like, you know, we'd be hanging out there like drawing and you'd see these comedians walk in to like get ready for their show. And then slowly the, the comic book store would like fill up with these people and they'd all come and like look and they'd be like, what are you drawing? And I'd be like, you know, it's this, you should check out this. And so like, it was this symbiosis of like artists and creatives that were like there hanging out and drawing. And like, I totally stole that idea of Meltthology to do like in this Facebook group that Jason and Jerome are on. And so now first Saturday of every month, we all get together and hang out and draw and just chat. And so when I'm hanging out with Canadian artists, which is like interesting because many of the artists that we do work with are from Canada, including Craig CK, who couldn't be here. I wanted to shout him out. Uh, yeah, he created that shirt that Jerome's wearing, Jack Kirby. <laughs> The National Kirby look at the Look at the draw tattoos. Look at the draw Raja, tattoos. You want to get a tattoo? Look at the draw tattoos. It's in Oshawa. Okay? He's dope. He That's correct. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, um, honestly, the entire group that we work with is incredibly creative. So the only thing that's different about Canadian artists and these amazing American artists or French artists that we're working with or Amsterdamian artists or wherever, <laughs> however you say that, Hol Hollanders. Dutch. Um, Dutch come on Jason he's right <laughs> Dutch and um you know they're just all creative and positive so the only real difference is the way you say about <laughs> you know in in Toronto they actually have like I I participate in this um it's called the Toronto Comic Jam um it's the and same we, kind of thing. So, yeah same exact thing um it's uh it's a bunch of like cool like local um comic artists some of them are like so good and I'm like like, oh my God, I'm like intimidated. <laughs> but they meet like every Tuesday. And now because of like, obviously like the pandemic and everything, we do it over Discord. And oh, nice. it's awesome. Like, and I feel like it was uh, like, I didn't go when it was um, like in person, but I've heard stories. And basically um, anybody could kind of come in. Like you didn't have to be like, exactly. like it's not like a, it wasn't a club. It was like anybody could join in and just start making comics. And um, when you get the zines, um, afterwards that come in it's really cool to see like the progression of the story but mm -hmm. the evolution of the art style from each panel to the other that is like so cool because you just get like such a huge variety like you have someone who's like working on like their their tablet you know and just like all like you know clean beautiful like vector lines then someone has like the next panel is like all like ink work and brush mm -hmm. and then the next person is using like pencil crayon and it's like totally just it, it's so inspiring just see like how like many different ways there is to create work um i think that's kind of like why we all got into like art is that there's no like right way to do something you know, like any way, like there's so many different ways for it to be right and good, you know, like you don't have yeah. to use a certain material for it to be, um, you know, printable or publishable or like, you know, ready for people to see, you know, it could be. In... And it's really, yeah, Sorry, guys. yeah no, it's really no, no, no. empowering yeah, for same. those other artists too, just because they're like, you know, I'm learning and I'm in this like creative, like space where everyone is creating. So I'm empowered to like, because a lot of times at Meltology too, there'd be like, you know, somebody brought their girlfriend or boyfriend and they're like, I'm not an artist. And then by the end of the event, they're like, they have a page, they're psyched, they like bought some comics. They're like, I'm, I'm going to make books now, you know? And it's like, as long as you've got something to say, you can make a book, you know? And it's like, so, so it's empowering to all these different types of people. And, you know, then you're like, oh, I'm in a book with this dude like how crazy is that you know and then you have your like your zine and you're like i'm published you know <laughs> so is there going to be a carpos collective jam coming up soon <laughs> i would love that i mean i'm kind of like more into comics than these two girls are but i mean i've been trying to like or some first, I'm like it's a first oh. Saturday next it's a first yeah, Saturday sponsored by Saturday. Whitney yeah. Diver Man, Julie, Julie just just show up if not sponsored by Cosmic Lion Productions happy to do it that's right just you know just what more show up on Saturdays send me a link yeah. I'm gonna come I'm gonna come and you know what I'll do is um I will invite the people from the comic jam to come nice. and then All right. I'll invite you guys to the comic jam too. Cause oh, it's, awesome. it's like the people there are so nice and cool. And 
I hope that. Yeah, just like maybe become one, one teamwork. mob now. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> the <teamwork. laughs> there is a little bit of crossover between the comic gem and uh, the, oh. the cartoonist K. Fabring side seats. There are a few members of both. Oh, oh nice. yeah. yeah, yeah. Just throwing that out nice. there. Synergy <laughs> makes sense. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. I love how now. a friend's so supportive. Oh, it's comics so great. Are, yeah, they're, they're either one or the other. They're either like incredibly right. territorial and private and insecure i'm going to put those things together uh it's a little loaded i'm sorry uh or they're very generous and sharing and realize that no one is a threat to each other that everyone's yeah. everyone's strengths like it, you know the rising tide raises all ships um, yeah but we know, don't hang yeah. out with those other guys we only well, hang out with the cool people you know what julie <laughs> i gotta say <laughs> that might be a little bit dismissive to other ways of being there's a lot we can do to <laughs> to influence others who maybe are not feeling uh, the most secure like maybe just being okay around. fine we're gonna convert right. them we're right. gonna convert them win well, them over well we'll, we'll show guide, them just, that just there is guide them without class. them knowing just it just just right. artception just artception yeah just get them to do what you need to do, <laughs> do. they're gonna be like oh i'm so high class in the comics scene and we're gonna be like no you're not you're one like, of us yeah, now the, <laughs> you're one of us now the witch in the you're all, we're all we're all low like, brow you're, you're down right. here like, you're so sorry right. it's kind of wonky at the end you might you might need to work on that it's okay just just bring in the practice page that's fine well, Shirley, you're trying to convince Julie. You're trying to tell Shirley and or Shirls and Joyce yeah. to get more involved in cartooning. So it's yes. it's like putting them on the outside, saying they're not, and then like, uh, but you want them to come in. Like, no, I thought you were no, talking about no, like that, cartoonists who are like, saying. oh, I don't hang out with the riffraff. Actually, no, it's are. not. It's not that. It's I, I mean that any kind of person that is going to are the riffraff going to separate <laughs> is going to think about people as being things that are that are others like oh, i'm not really a cartoonist it's it's uh think about how powerful it can it can make you feel and how uh, how empowered it makes them feel to make them uh, or to help them realize that they they are included in that she they actually, actually invited us they are to cartoonists, work right? on a collaboration together and we're right. probably planning on making a comic book. And even though I'm not the most confident when it comes to doing line art and like drawing people in a non-realistic way, uh, because that's the, the only thing I know how to do, I actually suggested because I work with paper mache, like what if I paint paper mache the backgrounds? Like you hate doing backgrounds. Like I can add texture, oh, like collage and awesome. add like an organic layer. Yeah. And Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we've got stuff in the works. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, I'm sure you yeah, do. Awesome. I mean, and Joyce, I mean. Gonna, it's gonna look like, like a Kubo comic, like. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes, oh, yes. oh my God. <laughs> yeah. We could even remotely like resemble Kubo and the two strings that be you know like that chef's kiss okay just a bit of a shout out yeah and as well you can also take photographs of paper mache scenes that you make and that can get it could be the panels oh yeah yeah that's right? a There's, big thing that stuff. delicious yeah. you can make the panels in any way that you want to generate that image paper mache it's, art right. it's the new uh what is it? The claymation, new claymation. Yeah, <laughs> there's actually like a whole like sub genre of like illustration where it's not drawing at all. It's just yes! sculpture. I grew up And then on they that. just, yeah. And then it, it, people just photograph it. And like, that's like, you know, that's the illustration, which mm -hmm. is like so cool. Like I could never do that because it sounds very labor intensive. You could. <laughs> you could. Yeah. I, totally I could, but I don't, do do. don't <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. Too much work. Too messy. To, I got to clean after. Forget it. <laughs> to get a little more technical, just to get this a, little, a tad more like practical for a sec. You know, in a in a, a traditional mainstream comic book, you would only probably get one really good establishing scenery shot. Or scenery panel. I don't know. Let's just say one a page. So the rest of it, it can be things where the background is based on the same um, establishing information, just closer. So we, you could, in theory, you know, make only one paper mache background per page, and some of the shots wouldn't necessarily, some of the panels wouldn't necessarily include the background, and some would be a zoomed-in shot of that mm -hmm. background. So it wouldn't be, you know, 
90 panels mm -hmm. and 90 sculptures. It can be 20 sculptures. Mm -hmm. and, uh, or one really long one. <laughs> or one really long one, depending <laughs> on the situation. But yeah, it could be, I, I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility. I think it could be really beautiful and original and yeah. very much. I'll uh, wait for your call for your next. <laughs> no, you, it's, background it's you, <laughs> it's, it's your voice. Okay. Your project, <laughs> your and collaboration. Word, word, balloons, word balloons can cover a lot of space. Mm -hmm. That's true. All the parts <laughs> we don't like, if we draw it kind of ugly, we'll just put a like a yeah, balloon put a on top balloon of it. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All the ugly parts we don't like. But I think that's what we're planning on next is um, with this. Like we're, we we don't know what we're what the comic's going to be about. We're more thinking like practicality of how we're going to do it. But I think um, we're going to try and like bring in like our strengths. Like mine is kind of like um, like just like traditional drawing on paper like ink stuff, um, Joyce with her like paper mache and um, material, material stuff. And then Cheryl's with her like design skills and like writing and stuff. So she's probably gonna do like the, I mean, not that we don't write either, but uh, let's focus on one. We thing are quite time. different in like our fortes, but that's the lovely part of how we collaborate. Uh, yeah, and I definitely love doing the sceneries. I'm generally a, a scenic, um, like uh, nature is, is like most of the things that I draw and paint. Um, and I do a lot of traditional paintings that are surrealistic. So like we tend to bring a lot of those different elements all into our collaborative work. So for the, this next one, we're definitely looking to amp up like both what we are good at and both like what mm -hmm. we're all lacking um, and definitely create something something a little different. <laughs> We're so glad everyone else is better at the things that we really don't like doing. <laughs> yeah. That's the beauty of a team. Really yeah. well. Yes, absolutely yeah. the beauty of a team, man. Totally, yeah. It sounds Just like you guys all make, yeah, such great teams. No, that's so awesome. Um, okay, so I do want to ask one final question. This has been so great. I feel like we've got like, I don't know, just so many great like and inspiring ideas. Um, unfortunately I had so many more questions planned and like I feel like we all could have talked for like hours but I'm wondering if everyone we can do wants part two to, like, <laughs> I mean part two I'm down yeah, yeah where's my question we're yeah. waiting for our questions yes. <laughs> yeah so I'm wondering if everyone could go around the room or the zoom and say like like one word that or like one word that like describes how they feel when they think about working like with their fellow artists you can just shout them out i'll say encourage because you um, when you see what everyone's working on it encourages you to like uh to to try harder work harder push yourself harder so it, it, i'm encouraged by seeing the amazing work that the 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 whole, as Jerome calls it, the digital bullpen that we've been working with uh, is creating, yeah. encouraging. Sure. Oh, awesome. And uh, uh, yeah, what about you, Jerome? Reciprocity. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> Thank you, Lauren Hill, for uh, letting me know that word. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, reciprocity. I, I think that's the, the best way to, to, uh, to, to explain it. It's just, uh, you know, because what I'm, you know, what I'm putting out is what I'm going to get back, right? If I, if, like, if I go and I, and I, if I go in uh, into a group project uh, thinking negatively about something, then I'm going to get some negative stuff back. I know, I, I know I am. And it's just going to make me not motivated to do it. But if I go into a project or go into something with, uh, with a high amount of, of positive energy and, and, and spread it as much as I can, it bounces back, right? It bounces back. There's that saying the, you know, you can light a thousand candles with just one, with just with one, right? And that's what I try. That's that's what I'd like to do in all the things that I do, whether it's whether it's teaching taekwondo, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, doing making making comics with with a group of people, whether it's I'm just at a party or or whatever, right? Just 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 hanging out with people. I I like people laughing, and laughing makes laughing, and 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 happy makes happy. So. Uh, I just try to just do that, give that part first. So reciprocity, if I do the first thing, the first thing, that's, that's what I'll get back. If I do the first thing poorly, I'm going to get poorly back. And that's way more than one word. Sorry, Ashlyn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's such a great word. Yeah, I, I would say representation because uh, mm. 
we often, because we're so different, we always are looking for something symbolic or something that's a motif that we all share that we feel comfortably represented in. So even if we have, it has, it means something different to each one of us, making sure that we put that representation, whether it's in a symbolic form, like for some example, we all identify with this baby carrot in this gigantic pictures book, picture book that we are actually working on about the story of Onion, how, how he has many different layers and how he uh, develops each layer because of hardship, but then like why they're there and how he can peel them to help someone else who's also going through something similar to mourn together and to process together. But anyways, there's garden people. Oh, it's gonna make and... me cry. <laughs> Yay, oh, that's the cry. goal. Um, <laughs> and if we all can identify ourselves in that book, this becomes like a such more personal project to each, each of us. Um, or for example, even if we do make a comic book, the fact that we will be represented visually differently and it won't be just one person's project and that person will be carrying the whole load, which actually we had a lot of trouble with in the beginning because each forte that we had, we ended up doing majority of the work. And then it was like, where am I represented? But especially as a collective and as people who wanna work with other people of color, um, people from different backgrounds, people with different religions, um, all that kind of stuff. And we all come from different uh, origin stories. Uh, that representation is huge for us. Yeah. Uh, that's so amazing. That's such a great word too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, for me. I, oh, oh, you go, Shirley. Go you go. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. You go, you, you go, you go. I talk a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, I would say boundless. Because I think especially during the quarantine, everybody realizes like how much we need, need each other. Um, and not just that the art is boundless, but that, you know, we transcend borders and transcend different kind of communications. And even if we don't speak the same language, like art is such a beautiful way to talk to each other and communicate and um, share ideas and share emotions that we all feel as human beings. And like, it's, it's such a, um, yeah, it's just such a beautiful thing um, that we're all in this giant world of a bubble together, um, even if we can't physically be next to each other. So yeah, I absolutely adore it. <laughs> That's so sweet. I love that answer. Um, so I know that like this one will not apply to a lot of people, um, but for me, when I'm creating with other people, um, just based on like, because of my like past experience, like going to university for so long and like just kind of forcing myself to not be afraid anymore. Um, when I'm collaborating with other artists and the other people are good people, I feel safe creating. Um, where I know that like a lot of people don't feel safe creating, but I feel like I can bring to the table like anything, anything, the most hideous idea. And people will be like, okay, that's ugly, but there's something cool there, you know? And I feel like I can bring anything to the table and everybody will be like respectful towards me. And I know that's not the same, that experience isn't like held by, um, or isn't had by like a lot of people. Um, a lot of people like get shut down or they haven't found the right people to be creating stuff with and they don't feel safe doing that. But I really hope and encourage that like, you know, people that, want to collaborate with other people and have had bad experiences in the past like just keep trying to find new people to work with and new people to be in that creative space with because there are people out there who are going to make you feel safe yes. to work with yes. that are going to be like excited about whatever hot garbage you bring to the table yes. like you'll be like you know this is a pile of poo and they'll be like, oh, no, but look, if you take off the poo, there's something cool in the middle of it. Look at that, you know? Corn. And yeah, <laughs> corn. I <wasn't> <laughs> corn. Yeah. So you know what? Sometimes, like, you know, like, like <laughs> you just got to find the corn and the poo. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. So gross. Beautiful uh, stuff. There you go. We have our <laughs> title, <laughs> folks. <laughs> find your so corn. I guess, yeah, you just, so I you just you just you just wrote a page right there. You just wrote a page right there, Julie. I'm gonna steal That's that a novel right there. Oh, I'm just letting you right now. You just let, I'm just letting you Find know the right corn now, Julie. The I'm gonna steal soul. that. Find the corn. Find the corn, Find the guys. Corn. <laughs> so good. 
<laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> find find good people. Keep looking. If you haven't found good people yet, there you will find someone. Your people are out there. The, yeah. yeah, your people are out plant there. A kernel of creativity. Yes, <laughs> a kernel of creativity. Yes, and then yeah, it all starts and then, there. <laughs> it all starts there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And it works its way through <laughs> your creative body and comes out in no. art. Yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I <laughs> Yeah, no, don't apologize. apologize. Family yeah. channel. Never. Uh, it's a it's a family <laughs> channel. You know what? What's yeah. a little humor it's among poop humor. friends? It's poop humor. Everyone yeah. poop humor. Pew pew poop humor. Pew, 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 pew. Find that in your local library. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, that's so great. Um Jason, would you like to uh, close oh, up come with, on. with a word for you? Come on. My, my you got to follow that. My word is flush. Uh, no, I, I, it's, it's impossible to follow what you guys just did. That was, that was quite a mess you made. I, I would go with, the uh, word, I'd just go with the word camaraderie. That's definitely something I've experienced a lot was, you know, comics um, and the process of being creative is often a very isolating thing. And the flip side with collaboration is that you you feel you feel camaraderie with all of other, other individuals, and it's a powerful and intoxicating uh, dynamic to the creative process for sure. Uh, totally, oh, that's yeah. All of your words are so great, also so hilarious. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this has just been so awesome. Yeah, so I want to thank everyone for coming out. Um, I'm thank sorry you. we can't stay on for longer because this has just been amazing. But yeah, thank you so much to everyone for coming out and for watching. And yeah, thank you for all your creativity and just incredible insight. Yeah, we're so happy to have had this yeah, panel. Great. Yeah. Thank no, you so uh, much. Ashlyn, thank you. Thanks, for, thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you. And Mallory and, for hosting. Uh, so thank we'll, you for we'll see you guys uh, next Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Saturday. yeah. you know what? In five um, minutes. Get on back on yeah, Zoom We should continue minutes. this on my podcast. <laughs> exactly. We gotta, like, yeah. we gotta, like, send our, like, <laughs> links in the chat. If you want to do an impromptu, yeah, yeah. if you want to do an impromptu co Cosmic Lion radio episode, I'll do an impromptu Cosmic Lion radio episode. <laughs> I would love I'd, to have I'd have done that yesterday. Down. He was talking so to down. me. Oh. oh, well, no, the whole collective. Just you. <laughs> See, he wants to talk about my teamwork. You my can make team. your own podcasts. Uh, oh my god, that's the worst thing that anyone could say. Let's make a podcast. Oh no, <laughs> because as if, as if... a lot of people think it's easy. A lot of people yeah, think it's yeah, really yeah. easy. Like, oh yeah, let's make a podcast, and then it's like four hours of unedited sound. <laughs> Yeah. Oh me. no. When I'm editing every I know a guy that I know that a guy that's good. But that, start that, anywhere. Uh, edit it really, really well. <laughs> Have you made a podcast already, Julie? Me? No. But I've yeah. But okay. I've been sent links to friends, friends podcasts. Like, oh, I think you'd really like this. And then it's like five hours of unedited footage, and I'm like. Oh, oh no, I can't listen to this. Like, oh. uh -uh. That actually reminds <laughs> me, Julia is our secret weapon because she gets bored easily if it's bad, if it's bad quality. So <laughs> we cannot so make bad know. work. <laughs> that <laughs> is our filter. It's boring. I'm, Into the I, trash. It's yeah, it's I I have to if it's gotta be I have a very high bar for myself for myself and so if i make you anything gar like if i make anything like painting whatever and if i don't like it I, even if i've spent seven hours on it i'm like garbage there it goes into the wind <laughs> goodbye no one must like, do it this it has to mean yeah. something what is the <laughs> goal of this story <laughs> She's just looking for the corn. That's all. <laughs> for it. the corn. Okay. Yeah. Yes. We have to find it. Colonel <laughs> hunting. The golden, golden nugget. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thanks so much. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. So Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.